there's a lot to reflect to. Do you know that Africa is a dangerous place? You know why? Because you can't, you can't lose your heart in it. You go there and it steals your heart and then you fall in love and you wanna go back again. I did, my, I did, my, I did several field work in uh, Eswatini, in uh, South Africa, in Kenya, and our university has a research station in, in Taita and in Tanzania as well. So <clears throat> I've heard a couple of things, and uh, what I would like to uh, point out here is uh, I have a lot to reflect to, really. Uh, Africa, is a cha Africa is changing rapidly. For more than two decades now, the continent has experienced sustained economic growth, expanding by 35% between 2000 and 2014. And this year, according to the IMF, of how we have heard it in the previous, previous lectures, many of the world's fastest growing countries in 2019 will be again in Sub-Saharan Africa. Poverty rates, meanwhile, have fallen with the percentage of people living less than uh, $1.90 a day declining from 54% in, <clears throat> in 1990 to 41 in 2013. Its population growth, growth is now less monumental. One of the main challenges for agriculture in the coming decades is to meet the nutritional requirements of the 9 billion people expected by 2050. While in other regions, we'll, uh, the population growth will slow down significantly, in Sub-Saharan Africa, the population is projected to double by 2050. That's how we see in these graphs what I, what I have uh, inserted. An expansion nearly by 10 times relative to 1960 from 20, 27, uh, 20, uh, 227 million to 2.2 billion. As a result, the share of sub-Saharan Africa in the world's population is projected to grow as well. In 1960, uh, the share of the region was just 7%, but this has increased to 14% in 20, uh, 2018, and it's projected to reach 23% by 2050. I'm not on, and I know I'm the last speaker. I try to break it down to numbers, what people, uh, what we can get. Uh, globally, almost one, uh, one in four people will be Sub-Saharan African by 2050, whereas this ratio was one in, uh, one in 13 in 1960. So everywhere you look, there's, there are signs of progress. But Africa, has, uh, <clears throat> Africa uh, faces considerable headwinds, not, uh, not least the risks posed by climate change, to agriculture and food security. Agriculture has played a central role in the rapid growth of Africa's economies, and combined with digital innovations, will play a central role in their future success too. Uh, but this future prosperity is under threat, and these threats are growing not just in Africa, also globally. Where population growth, coupled with the effects of climate variability and increasing competition for water and land resources, makes achieving nutritional security an even more daunting task. Climate change is already making food insecurity worse. It has reduced the global yield growth of wheat, maize, and many other crops. I will talk, uh, I will talk about this major free later. The number of under, undernourished or food insecure, uh, food insecure people grew between 37 million to a lot, uh, to a lot, big, a lot bigger. I don't know if you're aware, uh, aware of this, but uh, we just, uh, together with 11,000 uh, scientists, we just uh, published this in Biosciences about the risks of climate change. You should be aware of it. Climate change is one of the global challenges faking, fa uh, facing mankind today as temperatures continue rising, triggering a host of extreme weather events such as heat waves, droughts, flooding. The, these climate-induced challenges are manifesting themselves rapidly, causing socio-economic insecurities and health challenges, part uh, particularly in marginalized communities. 
there is increasing evidence of indirect associations between climate change and the rise of the rates of malnutrition, poor health, hunger and starvation, as well as food and water insecurity. In addition, climate change impacts uh, have put an additional pressure on already stressed nutritional res uh, resources, reducing the resilience of agroecosystems that are in part providing food and nutritional security in rural communities. Tackling these challenges requires a paradigm shift from the current incremental adaptation strategies towards transformative alternatives that also place an equal emphasis on human nutritional and health as well as environmental sustainability. In the context of marginalized farming communities, a transformative adapt adaptation strategy is defined as uh, one that causes a disruptive but desirable and sustainable change to social and ecom ecological uh, state of the system. If we, if we look at what we are eating, while over 10,000 plant species are recorded as food plants, less than 20, 20 species most of the word, give the most of the words food. And there are, these are, these three, as I mentioned, are cereals, rice, wheat, and maize. Account for 60% of the calories and 56% of the protein that humans consume directly from plants. But there are other, but there are other plants called orphan crops. These are defined as crops that have either originated in a geographical location or that uh, have become indigen indigenized over many years or several decades of cultivation as well as natural and farmer selection. The term orphan has often been used to refer to crops that may have originated elsewhere but have undergone extensive domestication locally. There's a lot of these in Africa in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, specifically. Thus, these native, uh, native species, or those introduced centuries ago, that are still used locally or even regionally with much untapped potential to increase nutritional security. Uh, such species contribute to regional diets, are often adapted to local environmental stresses, and may already be integrated into existing production systems that yet little investment to their improvement have been done or have been have been put there. He's Mary, she's Mary at, uh, at the bottom of our, our collaborator. Uh, these orphan crops are generations of landrace uh, land agriculture. Several orphan crops are nutritious, resilient, adopted to niche marginal agricultural environments, including such orphan crops and the existing monocultural cropping systems could support more sustainable, nutritious, diverse food systems and, in, and a broader gene pool for future agricultural improvement. The, re uh, the reduction in arrival land due to climate change offers opportunities to expand the area under their production. Their sustainability to marginal niche and low input environments offers opportunities for greenhouse gas emissions uh, to, to be lowered from an agroecosystem production and processing perspective. This together with their status as a subset of agrobiodiversity, which, uh, which there is a lot in Sub-Saharan Africa, offers opportunities to address socio-economic and environmental challenges under a changing climate. With research and development and policy to support this effort, orphan crops could play an important role in mitigating climate change or even, uh, or even triggering import-export trade. The demand, <clears throat> for, uh, the demand for these crops is increasing in uh, urban areas of Africa as affordable and available sources of nutrients. Thus, they constitute a significant share of local vegetable markets. This diversity of these species across the continent, for example, spider plants or African, or African nightshade, what I have worked 13 years with, and we published this book uh, that uh, just you to know what, uh, what, uh, what they are exactly. And here, here's where biodiversity and taxonomy meets with these, with these challenges. I will tell you more about this. The diversity of these species across the continent 
uh, <clears throat> including the wider variation of production and consumption patterns, call for a development of appropriate breeding strategies to meet the farmer and consumer preferences. However, most of these species, basic knowledge is still lacking related to their reproductive biology, physiology, resilience, resistance, tolerance levels to, bio to biotic and abiotic stresses, and even, even their natural variation, the genetics basics, underlying traits of, uh, traits of interest. And genomic resources are also lacking for leafy species, especially for African nightshades which have received less attention than other groups of orphan crops, such as legumes, grains, crops, millets, roots, and tuber crops. Additional considerations are therefore required for breeding of these species to highlight knowledge gaps, and our book tried to fill in one and, direct, and to direct future efforts. Adding value to orphan crops can also lead to better livelihood and improved, in, improved income generation, especially for smallholder farmers and for women uh, who are actually involved in the agricultural process. Such species as uh, orphan crops, <clears throat> for example, spider plant, uh, may also contribute to en 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 enhance climate change mitigation by increased hardiness, reduced external inputs, and subsequent reduction of the carbon footprint of agriculture. Despite this potential, orphan crops improvement has largely been absent from the global agricultural agenda. And I would, like, I would like to ask why. Presumably because the relevance of any given orphan crop species is highly geographically and culturally specific. Thank you very much. Public, ag public agricultural funds are rarely allocated to enable orphan crop research and development, leaving farmers often unsupported in their quest for better use of local agrobiodiversity. Several challenges impede the utilization and conservation strategies of orphan crops, including low productivity, lim uh, limited variety development, lack of consumer awareness, absence of a value chain and a loss of knowledge. Ongoing efforts in Africa, though, uh, to overcome such bottlenecks included documentation of knowledge by different programs. How to translate these efforts into tangible breeding outputs for the local markets remains an important issue that requires thorough attention. The urgent need to reduce malnutrition and hunger triggers the consideration of orphan leafy vegetables as a, as a viable strategy recommended by the FAO and WHO to nourish the overgrowing world population. Strate strategies for, uh, adopted to develop orphan leafy vegetables and value chains should be aligned with the needs of local populations for access to nutritious and affordable food crops well adopted to local conditions available year round. Thank you very much. <clears throat>